Hey, Cap. What are we doing here? Why are we letting a lieutenant write a dumb memo? Prohibition on the use of the phrase death before dismount. Oh, we can't say, we can't say mottos. We can't say motivational things anymore because they hurt the lieutenant's feelings. Let's see how they hurt the lieutenant's feelings today. Today we're gonna talk about a couple memos that caught my attention in the past month or so. Just to show you how ridiculous some memos can be in the army. I'm sure if you have a civilian job, you've got that boss that just sends out emails that are like, per my previous email, and email this email, and hit the link to the other previous email. And for shit that just could, could just be a text message or some shit. Not because they wanna make sure you got it, but because they wanna make sure you got it so they can discipline you later on. You know what I mean? Oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, you are just the worst type of person. All right, first memo. Let's kick this off. The cavalry. And who doesn't love 410 Cav out of Fort Carson? I mean, I know I sure do. Well, I really don't have a reason to dislike them, you know, so whatever. Well, their fantastic Stetson wearing battalion commander decided that one day he was gonna put out a memo. Here it is. God, I hope I found it. Ah, well, if it's not there right now, then I'll just, I'll link this story in the description. So you know I'm not a liar. Integrity check. Anywho, this handsome Stetson wearing battalion commander decided that the mornings are meant for PT only. Physical training is paramount. If we're getting ready to deploy, the physical readiness of his battalion is of the utmost importance. And I can't disagree with that. So then what's the issue? Well, he might have put out in that memo that anybody who's scheduling uh, medical appointments before nine in the morning uh, can't do that anymore. Now let me put that a little bit more clearly. A non-medical professional, this guy, that is worried about readiness, well, we should have mental and physical health are kind of about readiness, is stating that, that instead of allowing soldiers to have appointments scheduled in the morning during PT, they are no longer allowed to schedule those medical appointments during PT. Sir, I think you're overthinking the problem here. Sure, some specialists are gonna go and skate from morning PT with some sort of medical shit stating that, oh, I've got a dental appointment, or oh, I've gotta go see the mental health or whatever. That's, it's a very few amount of people. And it's not like they could do that for three weeks straight. It's just every once in a while you get a medical appointment. My question for you is, is this maybe hurting or helping more? Hmm, let's weigh these options, right? 0730 to 0930 are the times that this battalion commander said you can't go schedule appointments for your mental and physical health, just for PT. What are the troops in charge of scheduling, sir? Huh? What happens if they've got a busted leg or a busted brain and the next available appointment happens to be early in the morning? Oh, we can't take that. Now I gotta schedule it out for, oh, in two weeks. Oh, I can't just, I can't just knock out this problem and become ready. Do you see now how your physical readiness and your overall readiness of troops is kind of button heads here, right? Me missing one day of push-ups, sit-ups, and a run in the morning so I can get my brain better is probably better for readiness in the long run than me trying to schedule or push things back further and further. And let's be real, if somebody's got a medical appointment for an injury or ongoing issue, it's zero seven to nine in the morning. How are they gonna do PT anyway? H how, how? Why didn't I think of that? If they're already broken, how can they possibly do PT anyway? It's just overthinking. You're just overthinking it, sir. Let, let them have full range of medical appointments. And guess what? Your readiness is gonna take care of itself. I don't know why I had to say that. And just for clarification, a battalion commander can determine how long, extended, or short a duty day can be. And absolutely, it's you, know, you gotta fix some problems, you gotta do some extra stuff, or there's not enough to do that day, you send you guys out early for a little, little POB, have a drink on me. But, but this is just a little micromanaging. Let medical take care of medical. Let's get these guys healthy and happy so they can return to the fight in PT and not limit the amount of time that they can use to better themselves. I feel like the good idea theory just bam, smack down the head. Get ready for the next one. Why is a first lieutenant writing up a company memo? He's the XO. First off, let's break down who this is for. This is for Charlie Company, all right? So first lieutenant, most likely the XO, is writing this memo for Charlie Company. That means, I would assume, that the company commander, a captain, gave this lieutenant 
permission to do so. Hey, Cap, what are we doing here? Why are we letting a lieutenant write a dumb memo like this? Prohibition on the use of the phrase death before dismount. Oh, we can't say, we can't say mottos. We can't say motivational things anymore because they hurt the lieutenant's feelings. Let's see how they hurt the lieutenant's feelings today. Purpose. Oh, let's get to the purpose of this one because I'm sure it serves nothing but a purpose of ass pain. The purpose of this memo is ass pain. It's to remind me that I'm not mentally retarded and that this is. The purpose of this memorandum is to establish the prohibition of the phrase death before dismount for Charlie Company. No soldier in Charlie Company or its home station, A Troop, will state the phrase verbally or in writing. What? I don't think you could do that. I'm, I'm like, I know this is like a little, a little bit of a reach here, but n saying the word or writing the phrase "death before dismount," I don't want to say that this is a First Amendment rights violation, but you, can, I, if I were to write down something in my fucking journal that says "death before dismount" like a crazy person, "death before dismount," "death before dismount," "death before dismount," "death before dismount," if I want to do that a million fucking times in a journal, I can fucking do that. Don't tell me what to do, Lieutenant. Fucking jizz. Soldiers shall never say the phrase during any type of training or during actual operations. This sounds like it's written by a little girl. Um, yeah, you can't say it like during any training or actual operations, okay? Not like the fake ones, you can say it during the fake ones, like I don't care. But actual ones, I better not hear it. Mm. What sassy pants fucking lieutenant wrote this? Justin, the phrase death before dismount is detrimental to the operational understanding of mounted and dismounted tactics and can lead to real life casualties if allowed to spread. Tell me you've never deployed without telling me you've never deployed. You think that a motivational motto, just a bullshit that we say as we're fucking around during the day, is go it's gonna lead to people dying? Say yes, fucking say yes, say it will. Where is the fucking platoon sergeants? Where are they? Where are these sevens? First sergeant, hey first sergeant, what, what the fuck are you letting happen in your company first sergeant? Come on top. The use of the hereby prohibited phrase spreads a poor attitude, poor performance, poor tactical creativity. What the hell is even that? Lack of initiative, lack of physical fitness and laziness. Or maybe it's just a fucking bullshit phrase that we say. Right? Maybe it means don't give up the ship, you fucking doofus. Right? The Navy says don't give up the ship. Do you think that that breeds dishonor and laziness? Or does it mean like, this is my fucking home. I can't give up the ship. Much like you fucking Cav Scouts. I don't know if you're mounted Cav in a tank or your air Cav flying out of a helicopter. Maybe the last thing you want to do is ditch that shit like you're watching all the Russians do in Ukraine because then it's going to get blown up and now you're fucked up and you're just beating feet around on the ground like an infantryman. Like, it's kind of nice to have armor, isn't it? Period. Oh, you're on yours, that's for sure. The memorandum, this memorandum, is effective immediately and will remain in effect unless rescinded by official memorandum. Oh, I hope it's rescinded soon. I can't wait for your... Dude, company commander, I'm so disappointed in you. You let this happen. You let this happen. And oh my God. If death before dishonor, I'm gonna make fucking stickers. That's it. Hey gang, I'm making death before dismount stickers. Feel free to put them wherever you want in Kuwait. I ship to APOs and AEs. Enforcement. God help me if one of you NCOs throws one of your enlisted men under the bus and negatively counsels them or goes up to this lieutenant and says, he said that before this now. <laughs> He's like, you're a fucking tool if you sell out one of your Joes for this. The policy is ordered by the company executive officer. Boy, did I call it. Did I fucking call it? He's the XO with his head up his axe O and shall be respected as a lawful order. Where did this guy come from? West Point? Huh? You need, mm, I got him. He sounds like a West Pointer. Let me guess, you were like the first sergeant in one of your classes at West Point, huh? You had your big fucking doodad on your fucking arm with your zero service, and you had to wake up at like 4.30 in the morning to do PT some days, and sometimes it rained. Sometimes it rained when I was in West Point, and, uh, and that uh, camaraderie happens. We go, you guys, we're going to do a motivational run. We're going to go do a 10-mile motivational run tomorrow, because that's what's going to make us better and more cohesive as a fucking unit. Violation of this memorandum shall not subject soldiers to UCMJ action. Due to the phrase's effect on the readiness and doctrinal understanding of Charlie Company soldiers, 
Violators of the sword will be subject to additional education on mounted dismounted tactics and mounted dismounted operations, which may include, but are not limited to, ruck marching distances, runs not to exceed five miles, mount dismount drills, essays on the cavalry and mounted doctrine, or any other educational program that can enhance the soldier's understanding of cavalry and mounted infantry doctrine. I'm telling you right now, I, hey, hey, XO, I, you're going to be running that fucking shit. If you think you're going to get one of your NCOs to sit down and do extra PT or have your Joes write an essay and have your sergeants like look over it, guess a fucking gun. You're completely delusional. We're going to go and say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it, sir. Bye-bye. We're going to go to our troop and say, he's a retard. Please don't do that around him. Go away. No, you don't have to do anything. Just go away. Hey, XO, you just, with this stupid ass memo that you see right there, you just decreased your leadership potential. Let's see if I can say this in officer terms. Um, your unit readiness, your, your unit cohesion went down the moment you hit print on this stupid memo and put it out. Because now all of your Joes know, they're not guessing anymore, know that you're an asshole. Now, Lieutenant, whew, luckily there is a way back. And be welcome back into the fold. It's by rescinding this stupid fucking memo. It's by engaging in a little bit of a tomfoolery and saying death before dismount, guys. <laughs> and joining in. Death before dismount is a phrase that is older than you, Lieutenant. I don't know if I'm more disappointed in the captain that, who, who definitely looked this over. You can't, uh, you you ain't in charge of your company if you're letting your XO totally step on your dick and put out a memo this dumb. Come to commander, super disappointed. First sergeant, oh, I'm disappointed. Lieutenant, just, just new guy issues. Just dumb new guy stuff that you should just, you should, yeah, you gotta learn. You gotta learn. What happened to duct taping lieutenants to artillery pieces or flagpoles? I'm not saying drowned the new guy, but hazing is important. All right. Support the channel. Go to angry-cops.com. I got a new shirt. Speaking of specialists skating away and not doing PT in the morning, well, look at that, isn't that perfect? There's a fucking specialist on Healy skating away. And if you want to check out my new streaming channel where I go over shit like this in the military or the policing world, check out Angry Streams. Boom, there you go, just for streaming. Doing all the cool streaming on there. You can talk to me, I can talk to you. You can have your stupid XO go in the chat and I can let him know. How dumb his memo is. I'm thinking about writing this memo and putting it out to my guys. What do you think, AC? I think that's fucking stupid. Or, oh, I think that's a, that's a decent memo. It's a normal memo. All right. See you next time, weirdos. Close the door. Ah, uh, you fucking dog. It's just another dog walking around in the freaking front yard. If, it, if, you bark, if you're barking at that stupid couple of beagles down the street, I'm gonna strangle you. It is of zero threat to this household. My dogs listen to me yelling at them. It's the best way. It's called dissing your dog. How to train your puppy with mockery and verbal humiliation. <laughs>